Hello, and welcome to Save Your Bacon, a device comedy podcast where we think we're helping. My name is Will. My name is Zane, and just to show you how much we care and how deeply sorry we are we missed an entire week because of reasons, we have brought in, uh, uh, brought in yes, our paper master degrees uh, in therapy to the uh, spicy hot young jazz club known as the Cool Cats that we are at right now. Currently, everybody here listening to the podcast, we are at the Cool Cats Jazz Club. Um, where we can show off that we're both professional, self-sufficient, and musically gifted along the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you know, remember in the... I'm snapping because I feel like that's like a jazz sort of just like startup. Um, You remember in the Peanuts when um, the girl with the black (laughs) hair, who I can't remember the name, would have that stand for five cents that she would give advice to? Of course. This is kind of that. We've moved from from purely audio format to a little makeshift booth in a dark corner lit by one single candle in the jazz club so that in case you need a little you know makeup sesh with um with you know zane and will that you can just come by drop us a nickel in the in the old hat and then uh you know get your fix um exactly and that's not us asking for money Exactly. But. Today, today is not, today is really not about us. It's all about it's the music, about money, man. It's promise. just we're here to help if you want it. Uh, but if you drop your money, we're gonna, we're not going to give it back. Is what I'm saying. Speaking of, well, I'm I just, to someone someone just whispered in my left ear over here really? in a very oh. smooth tone, in a very Barry White manner. Uh, their their question for us, and we're going to help them out real quick here at this jazz Ooh. club. This question is yeah, I can um, hardly hear it over the you know this just nice beat going on in the background oh did you hear that Ooh, that was nice ooh, that, what that guy did was, that was really good was that dizzy was gillespie that? oh who was, was that jazz pumping itself? that horn oh my. all right okay go ahead this question comes over here from my dear friend tomato 314 and he's saying she's shaking me all night long what do i do Whoa, so relevant. Okay, so a guy came up to you while we were in the jazz club. I mm-hmm. mean, a guy has currently come up to you while we were in the jazz club. Yeah. Has he, has he walked away? Are we just kind of... Should we write down some he's ideas? He's sidestepping. And then just... He's doing some jazz square right well, next to He's me. getting... Yeah, he's getting shaken. No, yeah, yeah. Say. he's Yeah, he's been... Yeah, she's shaking him all night long. Um, as we can tell uh-huh. from the lady that's standing over there, that's just shaking this man all night long. But he it's wants to know. It's too bad this audio format. We really wish you were here. Yeah. If you're not. Yeah. No. This is this is one of those things that if you're if you're an audio listener, I'm sorry. You really should have just come down to the Cool Cats. We sent out flyers. We really. Yeah. This did. must suck if you're just listening to it. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> she's shaking me all night long. What do I do? I think this is kind of like an angel shot situation. What? You know what? You know what? You know what? Do you know what that is? I'll say yes, but I, I, but sure. Go ahead and explain it to me. I'm anyway. about to educate you. So, um, at a lot of bars, they have it's like especially maybe it's just here. I don't know. Maybe it's a local thing. They have this thing where you can like girls can go up to the any bartender and they can say, "Hey, I'll have an angel shot." And then they'll call the police <laughs> or uh, to say that a guy is harassing them. What? Wait, so Angel Shot is straight up just like, uh, is a code for call the police, please? Yeah, like, I'm being, I'm being, like, attacked or, like, harassed by a dude, and it's just, like, slang lingo to just tell your bartender, and it's like, bartender's like, oh, cool, cool, can you imagine being that bartender? Yeah. When you get that, this girl just casually going, ha, hey, yeah, um, can I pl- call the police, please, call the police, <laughs> but it's, but it's coded, and you're like, ha, ha, cool, yeah, and you look at the guy, and you definitely know it's that guy, and he's smiling yeah. smugly at you, and you just, what, do you, do you pretend to make something, and then, I think this is what I would do, I pretend to make something, it looks horrible. Spill yeah. it. Say, ah, that ain't right. And yeah. And you walk away for a minute. Yeah. Call the police. What if you, ah, this is tough. Okay. It, it totally irrelevant. Totally irrelevant. <laughs> sure. This is what I'm saying. She's shaking. She's shaking me all night long. Yep. I think this is like, uh, you're going to wake up with a sack over your head. You're going to be tied to a chair mm-hmm. when she takes off the shack, off the shack. What? Yeah. Off would the bag. She, yeah. Yeah. Eh, off, like the bag or whatever. And she's going to torture you by shaking you until like you give her the information she needs. Right. And this is his way of letting you call the police. They're on to me. Right. Cause this whole time, really, she's just been trying to shake the information loose from this man. Um, as you didn't, as you were well, not aware of tomato, this woman wants nothing more than all the secrets in your head. Um, this woman mm-hmm. is not going to stop shaking until she's downright shook and cannot shake no more. 
Um, now, you might think she'd just be shaking out on that dance floor, but really, she's just trying to shake up a conversation until she shake out all the secrets, uh, shake all that dirt loose. Uh, you know what I'm trying to put down, tomatoes. Uh, the thing is, you're gonna have to start shaking back, and there's only one good way to shake back, and that's... Here, let me give you a little tour back into the... Uh, there is a bar in this Cool Cats nightclub that we we're talking... This jazz club that we've been talking about. Because how else do you dance? Um, really? Now, that's, that's all I'm going to say. How else do you dance? Uh, this is so cool and hip, I think I'm completely li- like losing the idea. I'm <laughs> losing the whole point because it's there's too many metaphors I'm and you know, get, and you got there. what I'm saying. I'm getting there. Tomato, we're gonna get you behind the bar. We're gonna make you a licensed bartender right now, and you're gonna shake up a beautiful drink for this woman. Now, when this woman takes a sip of that drink, she gonna be shook. All right. She, she, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now you're gonna. Goodness gravy, dude. <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna shake her right out of her socks. I'm telling you, right out of her well, her up to ankle, up to knee socks, right? Because she she's so high. you're saying this is a literal. She needs to be shook back. Yeah, is that the is that the response? All right. The thing that I've gotten from this is he's being metaphorically shook, so she needs to be metaphorically shook. Now, if you're trying to all of a sudden inform me that he is being physically shook. Well, this no, conversation's gonna take we got, a you gotta whole shook her 180. on back. I get that. <laughs> I think that this is I think that this is still an even bigger metaphor. This is a bigger leap. I think it's a shakedown, and mm. that's what he's trying to warn mm. us of. That this jazz club is a shake She's shaking this, up a shakedown. This, I just gotta say it quiet. Shh, shh. This place, this, this there's a shakedown going on here, and so we can't say it. And I've heard of shakedown because I've played enough video games to know that shakedowns exist. But I had to Google it, and it turns out that a, a shakedown is a radical change or reconstructuring. That's not a word. Restructuring, particularly in a hierarchical organization or group, that sort of thing. Mm. And so mm-hmm. I I think that ah, he's yes. letting us know that sort of the hierarchy of the the Cool Cat Jazz Club is probably being torn asunder and we're going to be you know trotted underfoot if we don't take action quickly oh oh so you think since we're we're um we're shareholders in this ccjc biz over here oh is that true is that what you've done with our money we've collected from this podcast this not only it's not even just from last episode i have to warn you it's from every episode so far is all that money is uh we are we're actually we hold 70 percent of the shares of this of this building we're we're we've in done deep. well we're in deep we've done well yeah so is the information that we're are now we getting... the hierarchical organization of this place <laughs> are we getting shook down is he letting us know is... that we're getting like cooed no this thing that i need to, to figure out really quick is um uh, did we hire um tomato one three four early on is he a businessman for us? Because if this situation be true, be true. Um, I'm thinking he's a double agent for us on the inside of the people forming the coup, and that's why he's able to give us this information. So is he, so he's being shook for information about us, about our business this whole time? So now he wants to know from the boss how to handle this situation? Yes. All right. Well, or he's just giving us a warning sign. That could just be all it is. I hope you don't mind. Um, there's a lot of motorcycles outside. That's okay. <laughs> we're a cool. We're a cool venue. We're a cool joint. We got a lot of cool people it's, pulling up. It's worth it. Yeah. It's dead silent from your guys's audio intake. That's how good the the microphones are that are just right up inside our mouths. Mm-hmm, believe it or not, mm-mm-mm. they have new waterproof waterproof mics that you can just shove right up your gob, and uh, like kind of between your cheek and your and your uh you know your other cheek and um i I do have a couple of friends that have come and uh give me uh they've given me a little bit uh to help tomato out with because we do we have a crew over here uh and one of my friends uh some guy named paul has told (laughs) me whatever you do do not lock up your back door uh so (laughs) please uh tomato don't lock Mm. up your back door KDM 50, however, is saying, uh, shake her back and harder. <laughs> and okay. uh, yeah. the thing is, you know what? Easy and hard mode. You need somewhere in the middle. And somewhere in the middle is um, my friend. You see where Brad at. 
And you see where Brad at says, I don't know half of you half as well as I should like. And I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. <laughs> in her drink i hope that helped yeah i hope that helped my <laughs> goodness believe it or not this is an advice comedy podcast where we actually take people's questions and try to give them the best advice we we gosh darn have so i'm gonna i'm gonna start us off not start us off i'm gonna continue the train yeah there is there is yet another man uh I shouldn't say that. There's yet another question asker. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say what they are. Okay. Um, Coming up, and they say, hey, guys. Recently, when I was in a local coffee house, a friend of mine walked in carrying a bag of groceries. She came to my table, took out carrots, and started grating them. When she got close to the end of the first carrot, I warned her not to cut herself on the grater and that it was making me nervous. I went to the bathroom, and when I got back, she had a paper towel around her finger. Oh. She looks like an idiot for cutting her <laughs> finger while grating a carrot in a coffee shop. Should I have done something different to avoid this? This is from Great Job Kim. I didn't know that you could cut yourself giving something a grade. I need to warn all of my teachers. Have you never used a grader in your life, Zane? You seem like the kind of person who would say, I've never used a grader. I'm not a teacher, so I've never needed to grade anybody on anything. No, great, 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 my friend. See, that's see, you're just grading me at a great level. I, 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 I don't know how words can cut you <laughs> like that. Get off. Let's go. <laughs> cheese grater. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean... On the train, it's taking off. Here goes the cheese grater train. Zane's being left behind because he's grading papers. Come on. <laughs> I would never grade papers. That's my point. All right. So, yes, I've used okay. a cheese grater. What do I look like? Some Have dumb you? buffoon? A dumb buffoon who's never picked up a utensil? What? What do you think? I don't go into my own <laughs> kitchen and try and figure out what every single object in that kitchen does? Of course I do. Zane. And I've never I've used never a turkey baster or used correctly in once. my life. I once thought a turkey baster was supposed to be a weird <laughs> water bottle. It is not. <laughs> I thought I've would... definitely used it in the bathtub to put my dirty bath water into my mouth as a small child. Of course. This I've is... been like, oh, this must clean it. This is what it is. It must is. be better now. Turkey basters not... are the epitome of water purifiers. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not some barbarian who's just going to drink the water right out of the bathtub. I'm going to put it through this turkey baster first exactly. and then directly down my gullet. Yeah. Exactly. I have very clearly found many a use for turkey basters. None of which are what I think the turkey baster is for, which might be hmm. based in a turkey. Give me some more. Uh, <laughs> Give me some more. What uh, are some of those other alternative uses? Well, I definitely tried to clean a car with it, where you put, it was, I got the bucket of soap, and then I did that, and then I thought that that's how you clean the windows, because that's oh. how you get into the cracks. That's how you get into the cracks? Mm-hmm. A hose just won't do it. No, we no. Ho- baster power. Ho- hose is for the surface. A turkey baster for the cracks. No. Wait. What are you, what in the world do you do? What cracks? What? Do you not have... In a car? You, in a, you, you have know cracks the, in your you know car where window? The, you, know, <laughs> you know where the window like meets like... Where where it stops being the window and it goes back to being the car? You know <laughs> I that think that's part? my... Actually, that's weird you should say that. It's my new novel uh, title. It's called Where the Window Becomes No More Window. Where the Window Becomes Car Yet Again. Where the Window Becomes Car. Yet Again. That's my new, that's my new novel title. You'll never guess what it's about. Anyways, Volume 1. Um, <laughs> Where have we gone with this question? Oh, yeah. Zane, I've never seen you. This isn't it either, but mm-hmm. I've never seen you cook a meal in my life. Really? Yeah, oh, that's true. I've been but, friends with you eight years now. But you, you've, you've, lost, you've lost time with me because I'm, I'm a chef now. I, Are you? I do the cooking. I do give the me, cooking. Give me some cigresses. Dude, I just... Cigress? No, nah, that's bad for you. Don't smoke. Signature uh, recipes? <laughs> I'm, I'm still working on the coining for that. I'm fine-tuning the... Cigress? 
the abbreviation, some cigresses. That just sounds like cigarettes. Really? I love it. It rolls right off the tongue. I just made chicken today. I just made chicken with some basil and some pepper and roasted uh, pepper and roasted red pepper and cook it in olive oil so that it keeps some of that nice, good, good, liquidy whatever. And I made my own sauce too. Uh, wow. But I can't give away all my secrets, Will, because I'm a chef. And a chef <laughs> never reveals all of his secrets. Uh, you're going to have to we pay We don't want me. anybody else in the jazz club to hear that either. Yeah. I understand. I'm proud of you. It's weird seeing your baby friends grow up. Anyways, um, so back to the question asker. Is there anything that you could have done differently? Um, you, to, yeah. Well, so, A, why would you let them start grading carrots in a coffee shop? I guarantee there is nobody that was in that coffee shop that looked up, saw someone grading carrots, and then said, ah, yes, and then went back down to their coffee and book. Oh, and, cool, cool, cool. That's normal. And went back down. Yeah. The, do you go to do you go to coffee shops in town? Uh, in, in Baston, not so much. Not until summertime comes around. What do you mean? You don't go to coffee shops until summer? Yeah, because when I can be more outside. Oh, okay. I understand. Yeah. I just thought... Oh, I only have hot drinks during the summer. No, I mean I don't drink coffee in general, so I have really. I no just like call. sweating with my with my drink. Yeah, I, as my drink sweats, I like to sweat with it. it yeah, it fills me with empathy for the beans. Exactly, <laughs> it's bean empathy. Really, is what it boils down to. <laughs> they they sweat for my enjoyment, and I just want to give them back what's theirs. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It's a give and take. Um, it's a give and take. Is there anything else that you could have done? I don't want to be simple here. Simple is saying, t- just take the goddamn grater out of their hand. Why, why, just why have you waited? from them? Why have you been well, waiting Well, they did long? say they were friends, and I think that if I came in and was like, got a grate, and just got went gr- for it, and somebody <laughs> stole my grater, I, they wouldn't be called my friend anymore. You say what's mine is yours, what's yours is mine, and then you give them back um, tenfold. Uh, you, g- <laughs> you give them back uh, the keys to your house. Just for a night... And then you give you also give them tickets to that Lana Del Rey concert they've never asked to go to. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen those gloves that I definitely thought was just because people had a weird thing where they were trying to make a full suit of ch- like full full like suit of chain mail, mm. but they just stopped after a hand. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Those, uh, now those I do. gloves that are yes. made of chain mail. Yeah. Sorry, I should have said that first. It's like when Grandma um, tries to knit a chain mail glove for you for the winter and realizes how hard it is to knit chain mail. Yeah, I I at my first school I went to my first college, uh, there was somebody who spent. Uh, over like had started a year before they got to college and was still working on it when i left college there um on a full suit of chain mail for real for real yeah no that's not a joke at all actually believe it or not there was there was a guy and he just uh would sit around with like you know some pliers and a bunch of chain which is really just a, like a spool of wire that you just like put in the circles and you would just make chain mail all yeah. day long. Have you ever gotten a knock on your door? Just knock, knock, you open it up and there's just so much clanging outside you don't know what it could possibly be and they open the door and there's a full man in chain mail armor and he says, sup, bud? Yeah, I'm impervious. That's what he said when mm. he walked in. He mm-hmm. said, you can't even stab me. No, but he- Then did he say, try, you would try, go ahead, try, try and stab and me. He handed me a gigantic knife. No, um, he did- Sort of stuff like that, though, where he would he would hold it up. He would like test it out to see if it was holding up. Side note: would, I do like, think gigantic knives are more commonly known as swords. No, it wasn't that big, Zane. I'm not an idiot. It's in between. It's in between. I'm not an idiot. Is the issue? It's in between. No. <laughs> it's in between you think I'm normal knife and sword. A total loser to know what a sword is. It's wait. So it's not, it's not even dagger sized, or is it bigger than dagger? Screw off! It was a kitchen knife, my dude. <laughs> Big kitchen knife. Big. It, it was a big knife. Big gigantic kitchen knife. knife. It was like it was gigantic. It was the kind kitchen you knife? should be butchering with. Okay. Except it had a pointy end. Okay. We're so far from this question. All right. So far. Um. I can't, I don't even know. I think I think <laughs> I think you give you take away the grater as we've said, and you give back their house keys, and they go to your house, and they find a full suit of chain armor <laughs> that they can wear. And they'll come to the coffee shop the next day wearing it because they didn't bring a second change of clothes. Although that mindscape is horrifying of just wearing chain mail. There's somebody out there who's done that, right? There's somebody mm-hmm. out there who's been like, this is my idea of sexy and shown up in yeah. just chain mail. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 just like, uh, what's it called? Like a it's sanogram? Like that's definitely happened like eight times. It's yeah. like a medieval sanogram where they're in yeah. nothing but chain mail. Yeah. What are you wearing? Chain mail. What else? Nothing. 
Um, <laughs> What's on under the chain mail? Just me. <laughs> Just me and my fleshy, pink, supple skin. Anyways, <laughs> um, you you take away the grater. They go to their house. They find the chain mail. They don't have a second pair of clothes. They come to the coffee shop wearing just chain mail. And you say, here is your knife. or your, Here is your grater <laughs> back. You will not hurt yourself. Thanks yeah. to my chain mail. You're welcome. I do think that the chain mail is really the the best key is give them your chain mail so that they then can no longer be hurt by their uh, grading ways. You know, I think we actually helped give the person, like, buy the person for Christmas or their birthday time sort of area celebration, like, a whole glove that's, of chain mail. That's very true. That's very true. They won't find it degrading. It'll be for the greater good, and that's great news. <laughs> Dang son. All right, your turn, Zane. <laughs> uh, Give us a question. All right, this one is on the opposite. Hey, what about that guy? Hey, what about that guy? He came over and whispered halfway through the question. It was yeah. super disruptive. We yeah, it was super rude. Thanks, Vinzilla. For... <laughs> we cut that part of the audio where Vinzilla came up and interrupted our talking about helping out... Uh, it's a lot it's a yeah. lot less to do with the greater good and very much has to do with the opposite. Um, this question says how to jail a police officer who murdered your friend. Okay. Mhm. <laughs> okay. Is there okay. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, okay. All right. So hit me with the logistics. Um, your friend murdered by cop. How put that cop in jail, do you? No, there has to be more. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole question. Kill me. There's more, <laughs> That's right? That's the whole question. Come on. Did... That's like... That's a movie, right? It's, I'm sure. I'm sure. With the same language, too. My friend died from cop. How jail? Um, <laughs> it's How jail cop? He kill friend. See, there, there are too many factors to take into account like did your friend deserve it um (laughs) (laughs) was he asking for it is anybody asking to get killed like in in, and no no, the the answer is yes yes for sure for sure there are some people that just literally say kill me and then okay that wasn't quite the idea but yes um uh the other the next thing is how good how tricky is this cop are you working with quite the tricky cop because they they are on the they are on the police force um now most cops are the people that put other people in jail so you've got to convince another cop that this cop deserves to be in jail yeah, right so that's this isn't a, that's the tricky isn't a full revenge situation because you Otherwise, you'd just be asking, how kill cop, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you'd um, say, how do I get vengeance on this gosh darn cop who murdered my friend, cold blood? How do, yeah, how do I, yeah, seek vengeance? Anyways. You're um, you're just a good Samaritan that's like, this cop did wrong. How do we get him behind him bars? Justice. Yeah. yeah. Um, give him what he deserves for murdering my friend. Anyways, exactly. um, I think that, yeah, because you gotta, you got to convince a whole slew of people what the issue is, right? It's sort of like the, the corrupt, corrupt you know cop system story situation you gotta break in you, i think you go to training school maybe you just do this the, the training school just way. in general school for training go for it school for training yep. train up do it that's it um yep. <laughs> no you go to police training school um you become a cop you earn your trust you earn trust in the rankings mm-hmm. learn that you kind of like it and it's actually a good job and yeah. you got transferred away from the guy who murdered your friend and then you're okay or <laughs> alternatively you don't get transferred away and you're stuck with this dude and this this idea of this sort of mild vengeance of just having him being put in jail gets stuck in your mind and you eventually are just like hey dave he sucks right yeah and that's sort of that sort of sort of talk forever you've you've you know gained like 50 pounds and put on a mustache and cut your hair in order to look like a completely different person than this cop remembered and then one you become partners with him you you pretend mm-hmm. like you love him but you have like a shrine for his you know his his impending doom uh, <laughs> in your closet and one day as you're just like walking through in like an old apartment building you're like, oh my gosh, I found the perp. And he's like, what? And then you just put cuffs behind him and you rip off his police clothes and, and like, and then and what? have him like, yeah, frame him. Uh, That's all I'm saying. Frame uh, yeah. him. I don't know. The, I don't know the specifics. This is a movie. Uh, well, this I is mean, some movie. Well, you definitely I just I could wrote type a movie. these events into Google and, get, and probably and get, get some hit. 10 different movies. Yeah. For sure. The thing that you need to keep in mind after all this training, though, is are you willing to face the consequence uh, emotionally? Because there will be two things. One of two things will for sure happen. 
either. You will be so, become so close with everybody on the force that once you finally jail this police officer, somebody else is going to be like, hey, that police officer was my friend. And then oh, we're going to get a question that says, how chain. do we jail a police officer who jailed my friend? My and, police officer friend for killing my police officer friend's friend. And the thing that yeah. sucks for you is we're so gosh darn good at giving advice, you're going to end up in jail too. Um, unless he really yeah, wants so vengeance, gonna then you're going to end up murdered because unfortunately we have to help who asks. Um, that's yeah. not up to us, what they ask. Yeah, they'll hear that you asked us and they'll ask us in return how to get back at you and we'll give really good advice and then you'll be able to do it. Exactly. I think that's what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. The other consequence here is maybe become too close of friends with him and you regret putting him in jail. And then you ask us a second question of, I put my own friend in jail. How do I put myself in jail? Oh. Now that's goodness. going to be a conflicting one for us because... Me, oh my. Not because we'll have started to care about you, but, like, we already gave you advice, and now you're getting greedy and asking us two questions in, like, the same day, and that's... Yeah, wait, hold you, on. You gotta, you gotta lay back, because there's off, a buddy. line, bud. Like, I know that What's we... What's this guy's name? This is Vinzilla. Yeah, screw you, Vinzilla. <laughs> yeah, screw off, Vinzilla. Yeah, get off. All right, I'm done with you. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna give a question now. All right, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a friend of a friend of a friend squat in my house during winter break. He ate my food, and now it's weird when I see him. How do I make things less weird? <laughs> the whole thing? What? That's the whole thing. I'm sure he's got great all legs after break. all that squatting. <clears throat> all right. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is that your subtle way of asking me what squatting means? No, I know what squatting is. Very good, very good. I just okay. like that this We've was also... the hump. So now we can talk. You said your friend squatted in the... <laughs> We've crossed that hump. Uh, your friend was squatting in your house. So with permission, your friend was there, right? No, it doesn't seem like there was permission. No? Squatting means you don't have permission. <laughs> I thought that that was just breaking and entering. Squatting, I thought, but that they like kind of no. had permission to be there. No, it's not breaking and entering if it's like unlocked. All right. It's still squatting if you just hang out. It's, you know? entering. it's like loitering except for a longer amount of time. It's lingering. Lingering off of loitering. Lingering? It's. <laughs> I had a friend of a friend my friend linger in my house. <laughs> It's like not taking the trash out. It just lingers. All right. The real. The, I can't get rid of it. The real thing I wanted. <laughs> he sounds like a ghost all of a sudden. He sounds like a specter haunting you. All right. Very important lingers. question now. Is your friend a ghost? Sorry. Was your friend a person is now a ghost? Your friend of a friend of a friend. Other important question. Was your friend alive when they started squatting? Now a ghost after. <laughs> if you squat as a ghost, you still get like a better butt. Yeah, <laughs> that's the question I'm trying to ask. That's all. <laughs> if you squat and you are alive when you start squatting, but then you're dead when you're done squatting, is this? Uh, do you get your live person butt or your dead person butt? Does it count as a rep if you die halfway through your squat, but as a ghost you complete it? <laughs> that's my question. How many reps? How many reps is it if I started my reps? alive and finished my reps dead if i was better at squatting in the in the past but then i died would i come back as the best squatting version of me or mm. would i just come back as i was when i died if i get resurrected do i still get those squat points that i had from my past life squat points that's what they call them <laughs> weirdly enough that's weird that you're you're so up to date on the lingo for i'm squatting. a squatter so you know i give that clearly mind, squat yeah. points i had i, I collected yeah, I collected a couple I'm of squat to points. I collect all the squat the points, actually. Just, just this morn. <laughs> yeah. Question, a... question. If um, if you uh, do squat and then you die and then your friend dies, um, but like you you didn't squat super well, will your friend haunt you for being a bad squatter? Hmm. If you act, if you squat in a person's house and die, mm -hmm. well, the only thing you can do as a ghost squat to bother them yes how do you <laughs> how do you squash okay, that maybe bothersome that's how squat. all ghosts are created mm -hmm. maybe like that's why they can't leave the place that they died because they were all squatting and so they're just being punished for squatting in that place by ah. being forced to never be able to leave you know it makes too much sense now that you say it out loud yeah it's stupid let's not talk <clears> about <throat> that uh, how do you make it not awkward <laughs> when you run into your friend who is a squatter uh, you just gotta tell them 
uh hey how you been like really that's pretty... hey how was my food Does it... hey, nope, tell me that, how my, nope, tell me how my like that's store a brand o- raisin bran was i think you're making it a bit awkward but <laughs> is that too much is that making it more awkward or are you just asserting dominance all right how yeah okay where's the level where's the line between a dominance asserted and um awkwardness ensues is uh, awkwardness in the eye of the beholder or is awkwardness in the eye of the situation? squatter <laughs> in the eye of the squatter in the squat of the squatter <laughs> Awkwardness lies in the squat of the squat. I think it's only gonna. Be... <laughs> I think it's only gonna be awkward if you catch him mid squat somewhere else. Really? Yeah. Like, let's say you you want to confront this person about squatting in your house, so you go over to your friend's house, um, not the squatter's friend. And you go over to person C's house, right? And you're like, hey, I gotta talk to this person about this situation. And they're like, you know what? It's really funny. And they open a door, and that squatter is now at their house. Like he's moved on. Like he's at another house now. Are you going to confront them about squatting at your house or squatting at your friend's house? Now it's getting even more complicated. And really, all you should be saying is, hey, good squatting. Keep it up. Right? Just encourage them. Just be motivated. Just <laughs> just, just help them get through it. You don't it's want them to die and then, and then not be able to leave this earth because they died mid-squat. That's going to be, that's going to be a bummer. <laughs> it's going to be big, mad bums. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's either okay. mad buns or mad bums and that's all up to okay. you how you leave the situation you're right you're right, you're right. okay yes <laughs> yeah very good yeah very good yeah no very good i like that <laughs> okay Zane, it's your turn is it all right yeah. i i got a pretty tricky one for you <clears throat> cool all right this, quest- this is the part of our podcast where we do the middle <laughs> stuff where we tell you a couple things about what's going on hey shut up i'm trying to do the middle stuff <laughs> i want to reiterate some ideas before you skip ahead with the 15 second forward button and say that i love you oh good did you skip ahead did you are you still here good hey i want to say um hey just in case you missed it we're also on you're probably on one of these already but um you should check us out on apple Podcasts, spotify and youtube uh, we would love to get rates and reviews, and uh, those are the different ways that you can listen to us. Uh, we said this before, but um, YouTube actually, uh, although it's not really a you know a streaming thing because it's only through video format, um, it, it is really nice if you want to like send people some like clips from our podcast because we take every question that we do and we partition them out and make them into separate videos on our on our. Uh, on our account there on YouTube, which I think is just Save Your Bacon Podcast, um, or you will find it by typing in Save Your Bacon or Zane and Will, um, or either one of our names, Zane Shaw, Will Palumbo, should bring you up with um, any sort of Save Your Bacon mm-hmm. uh, 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 little clips you might need. Yeah, and if you want to send us questions, because all of this show, the entire show, revolves around every single no, one thing. That is that is all sending questions because we love you so much. We want to hear what you have to say. You can send that to save your bacon podcast at gmail.com. That is save your bacon podcast at gmail.com. Uh, we also do have Twitter and Instagram at Zane and Will. Hashtag Zane and Will and hashtag save your bacon always work to get to us. Obviously, the email is the best way to get in contact with us. We love your faces so much for even listening this far. If you've listened to more than one episode, beautiful. Make sure you share anything that you can on YouTube or whatnot with your friends. And just give us your questions and be a part of the show. And we'll all be a happy family. Gosh dang it, I love you so much. <clears throat> yeah, I know that we seem like we're super intimidating people and that we'll only take the, the cream of the crop as mm-hmm. far as questions goes. But we'll take your stupid crap and talk about it either way. Yeah, whether it's stupid crap or ki- cream of the crop, uh, we got all the hot takes. <clears throat> yeah, what was that first question we did? She's shaking me all night. Yeah, that's garbage. Send us something better than that. Well, I mean, or, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that we'll he said that, it. Tomato. I know that you're around. Don't worry. We'll pay for your Was that too so. loud? Did I say that yeah, loud? Yeah, oh, the song yeah, just ended. Here. He heard everything. Yeah. My goodness. All right. Uh, your turn. You should give us a question. All right. This sounds This sounds like the time for a great question. Here comes a question from, <clears throat> I'm cold, bud. And the question is... <laughs> I'm 16 and want to be the king of the world. How to do this? Oh my word! All right, remember when you We've were 16? We've been there, am I right? Yeah, remember when you were 16 <clears throat> and you looked you looked at the stars one night and you said, "I'm gonna I'm fucking run this earth one day." <laughs> this will be this will be, be my crap someday. This will be mine. It's just like you know everything here. This is gonna be mine. Is that like, so? You're 16. You don't know how a girl functions. You don't understand what it's like to have that was, facial that was hair. Nasty. You know. <laughs> you know. That was gross. 
<laughs> how they function? How could you have said that less like a biology teacher? <laughs> um, I think the difference between me and most other 16-year-olds when I was 16 is that I knew everything. Okay, um, yeah, that, no, that's, that makes sense. And that my parents uh, sucked. Yeah. And then one. life was really hard. Yeah. And so I think that kind of led me to my conclusion personally. I don't know if it's the same with other people, mm-hmm. but like that led me to being like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I deserve to, you know, like rule this world. Yeah, exactly. And uh, not to step on your tail, but it's like uh, when I was 16, definitely also probably thought my parents sucked and um, definitely thought that I deserved to rule the world because of it, too. Not just not saying that you didn't have a very specific um, individual moment in life, but uh, I might have. No, that's fine. Screw my thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, my thing sucked. I mean, mine was like my own thing that I was like, that's that was me. But no, keep going. Yeah, Don't yeah. Stop you. No, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying like maybe I. No, just say it. Maybe we're like maybe we no, had the exact same experience. It. No, this is good. As a child, as, um... I hate you, Zane. <laughs> <laughs> when you're 16 and you want to be king this of the world, this is all I wanted. I'm gonna tell you right now. When you're 16 and you want to be king of the world, you know what you're about to do. You're gonna you're gonna take your backpack. You're gonna fill it with like a couple peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at like three in the morning, right? You're gonna get on your razor scooter and you're gonna ride five blocks away from your house, and you're gonna realize that you're cold and you forgot a jacket. You're gonna come home, and then you're gonna get that the jacket. Be locked. They're gonna hit. Yeah, and you know what? That's gonna you're gonna get so mad. You're gonna try and run away again. Day two comes around. You're not forgetting the jacket this time. You've got more sandwiches. You're back in that jacket. You're back on your Razor scooter. You get a couple more blocks this time, and you realize, fuck, it's dark outside. I'm scared. I want to go home. <laughs> nobody, nobody told me that when I ran away from home, I wouldn't be able to have a nice, com- nice comfy bed at any disposable block. And you're gonna, you're gonna be there, and you're gonna be sad. And you're either gonna raise your scooter home, or your Razor scooter is gonna be bust, and you're gonna call your dad again. He's gonna say. Jimothy, again, two nights in Jimothy. a row. How Jimothy, da- you dork. How dare it be this hey. way? Hey, okay, you mentioned Razor, and I was like, man, that's the first time I've heard about Razors in a long time, other than those stupid memes about hitting your ankles. Mm-hmm. But yes. um, I looked up Scooter Razors, or Razor Scooters, how are they doing, just to see how they're doing, because I was like, you know, how are they doing? And the first thing that came up was a Walmart Razor Scooter for $23 at Walmart. $23. That was all I got for my birthday. I'm not trying to sound like a brat here for a second, but I definitely thought those things were like, you know, $400 when I was growing up. It, it's it seems like it was like if you had if you had a cool Razor that seems scooter, impossible. you ran the streets. Yeah. But it seemed That like... was literally all I wanted cuz all my rich friends had Razor scooters. Yeah. And I was like, "Mom, I want to look like I'm rich. I want a Razor scooter." And they're like, okay, for your birthday. And they got me it. And I think because I said I want to look like my rich friends, they thought they'd give me a $20 razor was... No, I'm sorry. They they were they were nice to give me anything. I didn't deserve it. Um, Except when I was 16. Mm-hmm. I definitely deserved it then. We're missing the point here, though. With yeah, I this, this question, this question, this This question is saying... Now, I've been bashing you for wanting to rule the world at 16 years old. But what you want to hear is screw all of the naysayers. How do you do it? Um, and we're really here to just tell you straight up how to do it. You want to rule the world at 16. It's very easy. Get your own talk show. Yeah. Pod, start podcasting, my friend. Yeah. This is just a way for me to try to control my emotions and feel like I have a grasp on the things around me. Mm-hmm. It's a it, place to voice all of your opinions because the thing is, at 16, as a ruler, you're going to want everybody to agree with you. And when you're 16 years old, everybody agrees with everything that you say yeah because everything that you say because you know everything by this point at 16 years old that's when you understand what what life is what the world is um and so you just make just make a podcast called um uh wise words of your now king just something Mm -hmm. that's very straightforward so people are like oh i'm gonna tune in every week to see what my king has to say to me yeah, um, or you could have it be something that's like sort of relevant to the idea of like helping somebody out, maybe through like the advice or things you're gonna tell them, like grab your gravy or something. Yeah, this is very important what you just said. Do you have another piece of wisdom for that? Catch your cabbage, something like grab that. your gravy, catch your cabbage. Um, uh, don't don't hey, dilly dally. Friend, and they need help. Mm-hmm. I'll catch the cabbage. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Exactly. That, that would be the catchphrase. Um, a true a true king would never hire a knight. That's not willing to catch his cabbage. 
Um, mm-hmm. And in times of despair, the princess must be ready to grab his gravy. Mm-hmm. Um, and also very important that your parents um, don't doubt due diligence. Uh, dumb drotter. Due diligence? Yeah. Due diligence. Due diligence. Dumb drotter. Dairy defines <laughs> <laughs> down trot downpour downward. This is not English anymore. <laughs> Dra- drain dingo de- de- denial is key. Yeah. All right, my turn. <laughs> hey, all you cool cats still cruising along with us at this club. This is about that time where this smooth jazz cut out Will's audio entirely, so you didn't get to hear what question he asked, and I got very southern <laughs> very quickly. The question essentially is thus uh i have a problem there is fundraisers going on in this gazebo of mine at my school and i don't want to give them any of my money um is it rude of me to ignore them if they know that i'm around and could give them money and i really don't want to or should i give them money anyway so that i don't feel bad about it i'm pretty sure that's what the question is that's pretty much how we answer it uh so that's essentially a question came in thank you whoever asked that question we lost that as well uh but let's just jump in immediately with my response no what no why is that wrong no avoid i think it's a conscience thing avoid it's like a tree falling in the forest situation is it better to ignore that they exist and have them scream at you from you know 50 yards away or is it better to come up act interested just an easy fix to this because either you're gonna feel the guilt of not being able to have money for everybody or the guilt of avoiding people even though you didn't mean to the easiest solution here is just scoot on in there with your own gosh darn fundraiser (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah, I I wasn't really a huge fan of the condemnatory tone for this person is trying to, you know, get some help here. But I do like the idea of starting your own fundraiser. Just be like, yeah, screw you guys. I'm going to do it better, though. <laughs> you know, and really, it can be for anything that you want. It could be for helping you at 16 rule world. It could be for helping get your friend. Um, uh, sorry, you avenge your murdered friend and helping putting that cop in jail it could be for something as simple as help me make more money than the fundraiser surrounding me which sounds like the best the most savage fundraiser i've ever heard of yeah do you see all these fundraisers around you help me be better just in general yeah and i think you hire sales people to dress like regular college students yeah to like walk around on campus and just casually walk up and be like dude you got any bud i'm just kidding you should give money to jeffrey's trying to become the king of the world um you hey, know man. like that sort of thing <laughs> hey man could uh do you know any adults that could buy some liquor for me and my bu- me and my pals buy me a bud light i'll just mess with you pay just go kidding. ahead this go over and pay needs more money than the other fundraiser over there that's all <laughs> bye hey, hey dude <laughs> did, did you get the notes for tomorrow's history exam i'm just messing with you jeffrey's pretty cool give him more money than the rest just get on yeah hey yeah, hey like dude that. you know hey whoa that's a sick razor scooter i wish i had one ah, i'm just messing with you i'm an adult go pay jeffrey more money <laughs> than the rest of the fundraiser just more than the other fundraiser is fine <laughs> how much yeah just more than them really is good. What, whatever they're at just uh, top it <laughs> <laughs> Just make a sign above your fundraiser that says you have to match whatever you give them with us. Did you hear the news about Mr. O'Malley sleeping with one of his students? I'm kidding. I wouldn't know nothing about that. I'm not a student. I'm a I'm a parent. Hey, go pay Jeffrey what, what, real quick, why give, don't you? Give Jeffrey some money. He needs it. That's all. <laughs> S- scoots up on skateboard. Scream. Ah, uh, hey, ki- hey, cool teens just like me. Um, hey, do you got give me your lunch money? I'm just kidding. Give your lunch money to Jeffrey. He needs it. <laughs> 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 I'm a paid salesman, by the way. Go get, go help Jeffrey out. <laughs> hey guys, the Mowglies are playing down at the local venue tonight. <laughs> I know that you've been told, holding out for dear life on those ticks, but you should spend that money elsewhere. Mayhaps on Jeffrey in the center of the gazebo. <laughs> you give me money. You will give... be like, hey, you guys want to buy? You give me money now. Don't you guys look at me like it's some game? This is life now. This is life I'm or death. I'm not a commodity. I... Yeah. You yeah, can't buy me, but you can pay me. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm not a Kamani, but I'll treat you as one if that's what you wish. Yeah, I like that. Also, give to Jeffrey. That's me. <laughs> I was going to say, this is I'm not Jeffrey. Jeffrey that's doing it. And these big adults that have been saying stuff in my name, I hired. And you want to know, weirdly enough, actually, the uh, the band started packing up. Looks like they just got done playing their... Uh... It's funny you should start to say that and then stop talking completely, Will, as it seems your mic is cut out entirely again. I know I worked around it for a lot of the episode, but for the outro, we got none of it. You made a joke about the band packing up and how we had to end the show. Well, guess what? Your mic actually cut out, so we actually have to end the show. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. Thank you to our parents for birthing us. Please, tune in next time. Will doesn't get to say his name because that was cut out. Uh, but I'll say it for him, everybody. This has been Save Your Bacon. My name is Will. I'm DJ Snazzy Jeff. Yeah, alright. And, uh, this is I already said this is save your bacon, but this is save your bacon. <laughs> take it easy, guys. And if it's easy, take it twice.